Welcome to the second of three videos in a series for district leaders who review and approve school improvement plans. Today's video focuses on reviewing the set, assess the needs section of the school improvement plan. This video was created by the statewide team for school improvement at the Lancaster Lebanon IU 13, a leading education service agency, which works in concert with the Pennsylvania Department of Education. Reproduction of this video is not permitted without written consent by IU 13. This video has four sections. First, I'll provide a brief rationale for district leaders to review school improvement plans. Second, I'll share the key to high quality plans. Next, I'll review specific look fors within the set or assess the needs section of the plans. And last, I'll point you to resources to guide your learning in areas of specific to set or assess the needs section of the plan. Most of what I share today is from this District Administrator Toolkit. This toolkit supports leaders by providing a purpose for each phase of the improvement planning process. It shares expectations for the quality of each phase and it provides links to resources. You can find additional guidance for quality plans at each of these QR codes. As you can see, the rubric is in both spreadsheet and PDF format. And on the right is a document that provides guiding questions for each phase of the improvement planning process, along with the expectations for high quality plans. A key aspect of ESSA is its commitment to the use of the cycle of continuous improvement and evidence-based approaches to drive better outcomes for students. Today, we're going to focus on the assess the needs phase of the cycle, which aligns to the set area of the Future Ready Comprehensive Planning Portal. As a district leader, there are several reasons you want to review school improvement plans for both compliance and quality. Pennsylvania's theory of action points out clear responsibilities of both the SEA, addressed by our statewide team for school improvement, and of the LEA. In order for schools and their communities to find success, LEAs are accountable for these areas. By engaging in school improvement and ensuring high quality plans, you'll be prepared to support schools through district systems and with direct supports. To be more specific, within the district essential practices, there are three that are directly related to your responsibility of reviewing school level improvement plans. By engaging in school improvement and or ensuring high quality plans through your review and feedback, you are setting a culture of high expectations, which leads to success for all stakeholders. This is an opportunity to establish a clear system that ensures organizational coherence, and it provides the opportunity for you to support the growth and advancement of all. If as a district leader, you need a little more convincing to be involved in school improvement, here are four more benefits of your involvement. This work gives you the opportunity to ensure coherence between school and district plans, because when everyone's driving in the same direction, you're more likely to reach your destination. You'll gain the insight to inform strategic and equitable resource allocations district-wide. You'll understand how to differentiate professional learning based on the areas of focus you see in the plan. And ultimately, you'll be playing a role in preparing students who are engaged, healthy, safe, and ready for college, career, and community. In general, there is a key to high quality plans that you want to keep in mind as you review each phase of the plan. Very few plans have an impact on students if there isn't a clear through line. In part one of these series, I explained each part of this through line. The work starts with a clearly developed vision for learning that stakeholders agree upon. That vision helped teams to know what evidence to collect what evidence would let them understand their current status? Once the evidence is collected, it's time for assessing the needs and exploring root causes. That's the focus of the video today. Once the root causes are identified, the team selects two to three priorities to focus upon. Once those priorities are in place, they guide the team in selecting evidence-based strategies that will address those prioritized challenges. And once those strategies are identified, the team can write goals that are appropriate and attainable based on the research of the strategy. They write clear action steps so that members know what to do and when. Professional learning plans are developed 
and clear plans for communication throughout are articulated. Everything is connected. Let's move on to the specifics of reviewing the set, assess the needs section of the school improvement plan. I'll provide the purpose of this section, a few look fors to ensure high quality, and I'll show you where to find additional resources. Have you ever played or watched someone play Jenga? The goal of the game is to pull blocks out of the tower and add them to the top to create the highest tower you can. In my experience, being intentional about the blocks that you pull and leave at the base has an impact on the stability of the tower. The same is true for a needs assessment. A thorough needs assessment builds a solid foundation for an action plan. There are several different reasons why the needs assessment is essential. It provides the opportunity to go beyond student achievement data and also review the practices, processes, and routines that have an impact on teaching and learning. Analyzing a wide range of data leads to an understanding of strengths and challenges and the ability to clearly identify areas to prioritize for the remainder of the plan. As you review school level plans, you'll want to look for evidence that data from each of these four categories was collected and analyzed. First, student learning. How are our students doing? Are we meeting the needs of all learners? Then school process data. What are our processes? This data tells us about the programs and processes that produce the school and classroom results we're seeing. It's actually the only measure over which we have almost complete control. Also, demographic data. They inform us about the structure of the school, the systems, and the leadership. Demographic data provide insight into the philosophy of the school through how students are disciplined, identified for special ed, gifted programming, AP courses, etc. And perception data. Perception data tells us what people think about our school and the systems within it. There are two resources that highlight the specific sources of evidence that schools should be reviewing. The Pennsylvania Essential Practices for Schools Quick Reference Guide, shown here, provides a list of resources of evidence per essential practice. The Preparing for the Essential Practice Self-Assessment Document provides a list of all of the range of sources of evidence to collect and analyze. There are three sections within the set or assess the needs portion of the cycle of improvement. Student data, conditions for leadership, teaching and learning, and analyzing strengths and challenges. For each section, I'll share factors for both compliance and quality, and I'll show you where the work is documented in the FRCPP. The first section is the student data section. These are the requirements for the school steering committee when reviewing their student data. Before approving this portion of the plan, you'll want to ensure the recommended resources were reviewed and that the data was disaggregated by student groups. When entering student level data into the FRCPP, there are two sections, one for the data that comes directly from the Future Ready PA Index and a section for local assessment data. First, we're going to refer to the data from the Future Ready PA Index. In this section, schools analyze data points directly from Future Ready PA Index and enter their findings. As you review this section, are there areas that have been overlooked? What level of agreement do you have with the identified strengths and challenges? These screenshots from the FRCPP show that the strengths and challenges are entered with text. The text is used to populate the summary of strengths and challenges at the end of each section. In addition, the strengths and challenges must be listed for specific student groups. The next section for student data is the student performance data. This is local assessment data. When reviewing this section, check to ensure that all available local data points are listed and that the name of the assessment is included. Did the team disaggregate the local assessment data by student group? What do you notice when you review that data? What is your level of agreement with the identified strengths and challenges? This is the local assessment portion of the FRCPP. Notice how the teams enter local assessment data related to the Future Ready PA Index. 
data for other related academics, and then data organized and analyzed by student groups. Next, we'll move on to the area where teams rate their level of implementation of the conditions for leadership, teaching, and learning. The four conditions are measured by essential practices, 18 in all. It is tempting for school teams to review the rubric and select a rating based on their gut feeling. However, along with a rubric for each essential practice, there is a list of sources of evidence and guiding questions. These guiding questions support your conversation with the school team as they consider their level of implementation. In addition, reviewing the indicators of operational provides a list of look-fors. By reviewing data and artifacts, the look-fors, and discussing the guiding questions, teams go beyond instinct and base their ratings on evidence. Here is where you as a district leader have the opportunity to impact the quality of plans, engaging in conversations and using the guiding questions, rubrics, and sources of evidence as resources. You can support teams in determining underlying systems or problems of practice that may be impacting teaching and learning. The conditions for leadership, teaching, and learning section follows the student performance section in the FRCPP. This portion of the plan can be challenging to review as mentioned, teams must base their ratings on evidence, not instinct. If you are not able to join the committee as they reviewed evidence and developed consensus on the ratings, talk with the school leader or the committee members to determine how they went about rating their level of implementation before you approve the plan. In some instances, ratings may be based on district level decisions. Based on evidence that you have, do you agree with these ratings? What will you do if you disagree? This screenshot shows where and how the ratings for each essential practice are entered into the portal. The last section of the set or assess the needs portion of the plan is where the teams review their strengths and challenges and select those that will influence the remainder of the plan. This is the summary of strengths and challenges from the needs assessment. You'll have reviewed the strengths and challenges in the previous portions of the set section, but this is where teams select areas to prioritize in their plan. This is an opportunity to coach a school team. When you consider all of the previous data, student learning data, perception, demographic, and process, and combine that with the information regarding root causes that you've discussed with the team, is it clear to you that the challenges, if addressed, will have a pronounced impact on the school reaching their vision? If it isn't clear or you see evidence that a different area should be addressed, now is the time to have a conversation with the school leader and perhaps the steering committee. Let's take a look at a very brief example. Consider this scenario. A school committee has completed their needs assessment. They found that there are challenges in math, specifically with students responding to open-ended questions. That was evident in their PSSA and their local assessment data. As they analyzed student group data, they discovered that the English learners who were receiving additional supports were performing better than students in general to the open-ended math questions. When analyzing on process data, the team discovered that teachers don't have common planning time and that data conversations took place once per year with the full faculty. And last, the perception data highlighted that students don't feel challenged in math and that parents don't understand the math program. Based on that scenario, how might you respond to Team A? They decided to prioritize the need for time for teachers to collaborate and have data conversations. How might you respond to Team B? They decided to focus on ways to engage families in learning the math program. Both teams used data to determine their priorities. They complied with the process of the needs assessment. When we consider the quality of the plans and the impact that the plan will have on teaching and learning, we may have a different perspective. Here is where your leadership expertise can shine. This is an opportunity to coach and or guide a team to deeper understanding about ownership of their work and their role in improving the system to address the identified needs. In the portal, the strengths and challenges are auto-populated from the previous sections. 
This is where the teams need to click the checks box next to those they will consider addressing in the plan. One thing to note, earlier I shared the four types of data for schools teams to analyze. The previous section only includes space for the student achievement data and some demographic data based on student groups. However, the essential practices are rated based on that data and perception and process data. Teams may enter relevant information from their perception and process data in the last box, most notable observations and patterns. For additional resources to provide more detail and an explanation of the work that goes into the set or assess the needs phase of planning, go to our website. The URL and the QR code are shown here. Here we are at the IU 13 website for Pennsylvania System for School Improvement. I'm going to click on Pennsylvania Continuous Improvement Resources. Next, I'm going to go over to the right on Assess Needs. Here you can see some drawers that have additional information. I'm going to slide down and click on this second drawer under Highlighted Resources, Toolkits, and One Pagers. Here is where you'll see Essential Practices for Schools in Their Communities Toolkit, which will take you to the list of essential practices, their rubrics, guiding questions, sources of evidence, as well as the indicators of operational. And last, I'd like you to take your eye all the way down to the last drawer where it says Learning Modules. Here are a variety of learning modules, about 15 minutes each, where you can deepen your understanding for each area of the plan. And last, engaging in school improvement goes beyond reviewing school level plans. Learn more ways to support your schools by reviewing this guidance document for LEA and district leaders. Thank you for watching this video. And if you have additional questions or would like to talk to a member of the statewide team for school improvement, please email us at pdecsi at iu13.org. If you have questions directly related to the FRCPP, please use the contact information shown here for additional support.